brothers. Jesus Christ is still the reason for the season. <laughs> I'll stand to your feet as we bring our minds in and our hearts in to bless the name of the Most High. We'll be here for another day to be alive in our right mind. Amen. 
Amen. Listen, I'm excited to be out of jail. Uh, I told y'all that uh, we, we had to be uh, locked up for a little bit. But let me tell you, God is good. He is good. He is a healer. He is a, listen, God opens doors when you need them most. If you just trust him and take him at his word. Listen, I, I, I missed y'all on last Sunday. Uh, it's rough being at home because you want to be in the house. It's even more rough for a preacher because he wants to preach. Listen, but I am excited about this Sunday, the opportunity to be back in the house. So uh, y'all bear with me. If y'all have to come pull my coattail, we should be out of here by 4.30. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be by myself. <laughs> no, we gonna all get out of here at the same time. Amen. 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 But again, I'm 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 glad of what God has done for me, for God has done for my family, how He's protected us and watched over us. Uh, we didn't have to go see no doctors. We didn't have to go to no hospitals. We didn't have to do none of that. Amen. Amen. But we remain safe and follow the protocol uh, throughout it all. And because of that, Brother Glenn, because of that, there's something that I can stop right now and just simply say, because of what he's done the last couple of weeks and what he's done for 2021, all of us ought to be able to realize and be able to just get right on board when I say, thank
you for the love or compassion that you have for each and every one of us. Listen, we are going to keep moving, but just a couple of quick announcements that we want to uh, get out on today. Uh, as always, we continue to pray for our known sick and shut in. We can continue to pray for one another. Uh, I say and my family say thank you so much for your thoughts and your prayers throughout this uh, last week for us. We thank you so much for those and we are greatly appreciative of it, but we continue to pray. We've been praying for y'all. Uh, yeah. We uh Remember to keep in your thoughts, your prayers, uh, Mother Barry. Mother Barry was uh, in uh, Bumpsy, Dallas Baylor uh, Hospital. Uh, she had suffered a fall, so uh, Brother Herbert took her down to make sure that she was good. I believe she had to stay overnight, but however, the reports that we received is that she was doing very well, amen. She's up walking around, and I told him, I said, I think it sounds like she's trying to get out of there. He said, she sure is, and she's getting mad at him because she can't get out. Amen. So y'all keep Mother Barry in your prayers, and we uh, pray that God allows for a speedy recovery. Uh, also, we want to remember the uh, Harvey and Scott family. I do not see her. Uh, she lost a grandson on this past week, amen. So her daughter's son was uh, passed away uh, this past week. So we are lifting them up in our thoughts and our prayers. I believe the funeral services for that young man will be held this week. So they have to travel about an hour away, but we ask that you would keep them in your prayers. That could, for we know that God is a true comforter in times like these. So uh, we lift them up, so keep them uh, in your prayers. Also, uh, as always, Pastor McNeely, uh, keep him lifted. I was able to see him on yesterday, and uh, he's moving around, doing pretty good. Uh, Brother Glenn, he, I don't know if y'all saw it, but when he came out, he tried to swing on me a couple of times. And I told him, uh, I told him, you're not the young fella you used to be. Uh, when you, you know, you, he used to say, he used to have this saying that don't let, we used to mess with him. And he used to have this saying that said, oh, don't let this tree fall on you. Well, when he came out, I said, listen, that tree ain't what it used to be. <laughs> it's, it's not as solid as it used to be. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he gonna whip it down to a little bush now because of age and time. So, but he immediately said, no, no, I understand. I'm just messing with you. But listen, that just shows that he's doing good and he's in good spirits. And we are asking that you continue to pray for him uh, as always. And continue one another. Listen, uh, y'all been watching the news. We've all been, been watching the news. And we are paying attention. going to be cognitive of everything that's going on within this pandemic and this new variant that is out. So we are watching, but y'all make sure that y'all are doing everything necessary to take every precaution to keep yourself safe. Listen, I'm thankful to God for what he's done, but I'm praying and continue to pray that God covers each and every one of us. Um, there he is. We've been celebrating December birthdays. This is our last Sunday in December. But from my understanding, there is another special birthday that is going on right now. Uh, she is not here. She is with her family uh, out of town. Uh, but however, I know, I believe I saw them watching. Uh, we want to wish on today, our very own Sister Barbara Turner. Amen. A birthday on today. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Listen, y'all know she serves faithfully on uh, the finance and on the ushers and everything else she could possibly do. So we say happy birthday to her and may God continue to bless her and pour out many more to come. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Sister Turner. All right, uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, we've been announcing it. We go to Hopewell 
uh, church on next Sunday at 3 p.m. for their installation of officers. Uh, we are going over there. Listen, I am soliciting your prayers. I am soliciting not only your prayers, but your presence. Amen. Amen. They are in full service just like we are. They've invited us to come over. So we are looking for our ushers. We are looking for voices in the choir. Speaking of the choir, amen. We are preparing. We're getting ready to uh, go back into a full swing of things. So if you used to be, want to be, uh, can hold a good tune, uh, we pray and solicit you to consider becoming a member of the choir so that we can get that ministry back to full spread. Listen, our praise and worship has been blessing us for about two years now. Amen. They have been pouring out their hearts, their souls, their faithfulness. We thank them for that. But now it's time to expand and help them out a little bit more. Amen. Amen. So we'll see, we'll work on getting that uh, back up and running. We know that it's coming. Somebody, some people have probably have already been uh, reached out to, but we know this is something that uh, uh, it's a major part of God's program on Sundays, especially a major part of Great Alberto. So let us keep in mind that that is uh, something that we are looking to kick off as soon as possible. Amen. I have a card here. It says, thank you. To Greater Elk Public Church family, thanks with gratitude for the gift of your kindness and thoughtfulness during this holiday season. Your blessings are highly appreciated. May God continue to bless you. Sister Josephine Garrett. Amen. Amen. Um, let me pause also say thank you to all of uh, our members and friends that uh, poured out and gave the extra during our time when we give out our gifts, our baskets and what have you. We were able to bless our mothers again this year. Amen. Amen. So we, we, we were successful in that effort. Uh, next year we're going to start a little sooner so we can do a little bit more. Uh, and, and again, thank uh, to everyone that was involved. Uh, I can probably look at Sister Belva and them kids probably had a good time this Christmas. Amen. Amen. So we are thankful as a church to be able to have played a part in helping that uh, and her, helping her in her efforts with that. And we ain't going to stop just there. Amen. 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 We are a church that helps everybody that we possibly can. So. We're going to look to do that uh, in the near future, uh, continue to build upon that so that we don't have to wait uh, and already have it in place. And then finally, finally, let me say thank you. Let me say thank you to all of your expressions of loves and gifts and things that I have received. I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for your cards. Thank you for all that you do and you've said, your words of encouragement, everything that you've done for me. Amen. I want to say thank you again from the bottom of my heart. That shows that y'all love me and I definitely love you. And we know that God shows up, he shows out, and I only do it to honor and give glory to God for if I'm not getting and doing what he would have me to do. Listen, I'm missing some blessings from God, so I'm doing it for him, but I thank you all so much for uh, what you've done and how you share with me. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and prepare for our tithe and our offering uh, for uh, today. If you need to be serviced by an usher with an envelope, Please raise your hand and they'll make sure that you have whatever it is that you need uh, for our offer to the period. Deacon Howe, we're going to let Braden stand there. He can come on, stand. We're going to use these young legs. We just take them to have an 
offering our thing today. So, but if you want to stand, that's absolutely okay. We're going to put in the word. <laughs> Amen. 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 I, and, and notice something. You don't even have to tell Brady that no more. Amen. 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 He done hopped up and he knows, all right, you say offering, I'm coming. That is what we call training up a child in the way that they should go. Listen, Brandon, I appreciate you. Thank you for what you do, your obedience. And uh, I know your parents and everybody around you probably stick their chest out a little bit and, and happy every time that they see you. So we appreciate you for your service. Ushers wave your hands.
for us to hear from you. God, it is my prayer right now that not my will, but your will be done. Father, I pray right now as we get ready to be recipients of your word, God, that something can be said that we may be able to take it and apply it to everyday living, that we may have a closer walk with you. Now, God, I pray that you open our hearts, clear our minds, open our ears, that we can allow you to pour into us. Father, whatever distractions, whatever traps that the devil may be trying to set, Father, we pray that you would remove them as we receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Book of Mark, Mark 4, beginning at verse number 35, you will find a familiar story.
Listen, uh, y'all, I, I can't continue to express how excited I am about being here on today. Uh, this message is something that touched my heart, touched my mind, and I am just excited about another day's journey that the Lord has blessed me and my family with. But not only that, I can't help but to stop and look back over 2021 and just think about how good God has been. I can't help but to imagine and to think about uh, how good God has been to others. I can't help but to stop and think about some things that have transpired in other people's lives that I did not have to experience. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful unto God that there, uh, that his, his grace and his mercy was sufficient enough to say, hey, I'm going to give you one more opportunity to get it right. But then I realized that there are some seasons that come in life that start off with joy, yeah. excitement, and expectations, but at some moment, they all take a toll yeah. on you. Yeah. And they put you in a place to where your joy is gone, your excitement is gone, and all you want to do is make it to the other side. You find yourself saying stuff like, I just want all of this drama. I just want all of this mess. I just want all of this trouble to be behind me. As a matter of fact, if you don't understand what it means to want something to be put behind you, if, if, you, if, you, if you've never been in that situation before, I encourage you to go and talk to a pregnant woman. The pregnancy begins out with joy, thrill, and excitement. But at some point in every pregnancy, a woman reaches the point to where she's tired of being pregnant, tired of the sweating, tired of the sleepless nights. And she will tell you that all I want to do is get on the other side of delivery and walk into motherhood. If you've never had to experience before and try to figure out what's get, how I get to the other side, just find a marriage that's on the rocks. And they'll tell you it started out with joy, love, Luther Vandross, Anita Baker, Eric Benet, and Beyonce all making us feel mighty good. But then you hit that rough patch and then all of a sudden the honeymoon is over. The thrill is gone, and we keep praying, Lord, just help me, help us make it through this season. And we can make it to the other side so that we can rekindle our joy. If you need somebody else to talk to, if you need, all you need to do is talk to someone that has to go through round after round after round of chemotherapy. And, and they'll tell you, even though the chemo is supposed to be healing me, I, I've reached a place that all I want is to get to the other side of these treatments and get my life back in order. Listen, and as a matter of fact, if, if you want to know, if you want somebody, ask the real Cowboys fan. We, 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 we've had some pretty rough years. This year we're looking pretty good, amen. This year we're looking all right. But there are a few years in the past that we've looked at some of those seasons and you probably heard some people say, listen, at the end of that bad season, you've heard some folks say, listen, I'm just glad that this year is over. And, and listen, I know, I realize that some of us have reason to shout and thank God for the amazing things that have happened this year, but there are a handful of people throughout the house who can declare that I'm grateful that this year is over. With, with all the hell that I've went through, with all the things that I've lost, with all the ups, with all the downs, I'm just glad to make it to the end 
of another year. And, and, and listen, I'm standing right here with, with a great expectation that 2022 will be a new season. I'm standing here with a great expectation that God is going to pour out some blessings. He's going to do some major things in our lives. And there's something better that's on the way. There's something that we can really hold on to that's better, that's on the way. Is there anybody in here with an expectancy of 2022 to be better than 2021? And if so, we've all come to this moment, this last Sunday of the year, just wanting to make it to the other side and start a journey into this new year. But as you look into the new year, as you look with a great expectancy in your heart, I do have one prophetic thing that I can count on is that when we go into 2022, it's still going to bring some storms. I, I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer. I don't mean to bring you down from your excitement. But what I want you to understand is that rain will fall. If you know life the way that I know life, I want to share with you that no matter how great or glorious your last year was, there's some stuff waiting on you in the new year. There's some headaches waiting. There's some heartaches waiting. There's some disappointments waiting. Right now, God is getting on somebody's room ready up in heaven that he's going to call home in 2022. Listen, there are some things that we are going to have to endure in 2022. It's going to lead us. But, but, but what I want us to understand is that when those storms come, when it happens, that, that when we reach that point that we need of God gives us some good strategies in a very old story of how we could make it to the other side. He, he gives us some sanctified survival strategies that will help you get through the storm. The text says that to, 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 this is where we can learn some of them in this text. And I want to, again, take you back. We've heard this story a many a times, but I told you, when you read it over and over, God will give you some things. But in this familiar story in Mark chapter 4, you got, you've got to find out that it's been a long couple of days for Jesus. Starts way back in chapter 2 when we find Jesus is in Galilee and this is his home where he begins his ministry and over the past few days Jesus had, had continual conflict with the scribes. He's been talking with them, going back and forth with them. The scribes have come not only to challenge Jesus' authority, but they have questions about his understanding of the Sabbath. So here he is going back and forth with the scribes, arguing about the real interpretation of the Sabbath. But if you read Mark chapter 2, 3, and 4, you will find out that Jesus' biggest problem was not the scribes. His biggest problem was another group that Mark calls the multitude. Somebody say the multitude. When you read the multitude in Mark, I need you to know that these are not the disciples. This is not the crowd that's committed. The multitude in Mark is a mass gathering of people who have heard the words of Jesus have seen the miracles of Jesus, they have come to Jesus for one reason. They want, some, they want Jesus to do something on their behalf. This is not the sold out for Jesus crowd. This is not the care in the Bible for Jesus crowd. This is not the sing amazing grace for Jesus crowd. This crowd wants something and they only show up when they need Lord have mercy. They only show up when they need Jesus to do something for them. This multitude, this multitude is taking a toll on Jesus. And they were always surrounding him. They were, and if you read, you'll find out that they, that they was constantly reaching and grabbing. And Jesus was trying to figure out, I, I need to escape from this multitude. 
multitude because they won't leave me alone. They were pressing on him. They were reaching. Can you imagine having thousands of people around you reaching and grabbing and pulling on you? Just, just believing that if I can just touch him, I'll be here. Can you imagine how tired you must be? Lord, have mercy. But here we are. This crowd is so bad that Jesus can't even have lunch. He sits down to eat, and here comes the crowd. They surround him, begin pulling on him. He, he doesn't even have time to just sit and eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They, they, he, they are right there trying to wear him out. But this multitude is so demanding that Jesus one day, he, he's he, oh my God, he's teaching in a house. The multitude surrounds him. And his mama Mary shows up. The multitude won't even let Mary in the sanctuary. Mary has to go and sit upstairs because the multitude wouldn't scoot over on the pew to let somebody sit down on the end when the usher is trying to get them seated. And, and, and here, the multitude. And Jesus' mama is trying to get in. They wouldn't even let her in. And by then, now Jesus is so worn out by the multitude. At some point, he tells the disciple, listen, y'all go get me a boat, put it in the water, and keep the boat running. He said, now, I have a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion that I'm going to have to make a quick exit away from these folk because they just won't leave me alone. And sure enough, Jesus is trying to teach the word of God. The multitude is pressing on him. He gets in a boat, sails off the shore a little bit so that he can teach the multitude from the banks of the water while they stayed on the shore because he needed some space. But the Bible says that when the sermon is over, Lord have mercy, watch this y'all. The Bible says that when the sermon is over, when the benediction had been given, when the sun goes down, Jesus turns to his disciples and this is what he says to them, let us cross over to the other side. It's, it's time for us to make our way to the other side of the sea of Galilee. Now, now, now stay with me, stay with me now. When Jesus says, let us cross over to the other side, those eight words, he's, watch this, what he said in those eight words, he's already determined the destination. The problem is, <laughs> the problem is, he hasn't set the itinerary yet. You know, you do know that there's a difference between destination and itinerary. Destination is where you're going. Itinerary is what you have to go through to get there. He told them where they're going, but he didn't tell them what they had to go through. Watch this now. So watch the itinerary. Watch the itinerary. They get in the book. They start sailing across the sea. And all of a sudden, a storm comes. Water starts flooding the boat. Waves start rocking the boat. Winds start pushing against the boat. And the disciples, when they start to see the water in the boat, the waves rocking the boat, the wind pushing the boat, they realize we in trouble. This can't be good. What we're going through, this is not right. We are about to die. But somebody realizes, hey, don't worry. Don't worry. Jesus is in the boat. So they go and they look for Jesus. They're looking for Jesus only to find him in the back of the boat. Sleep. And they can't understand. <coughs> How's Jesus sleep? I don't understand how. Listen, how how is Jesus sleep in this storm? So, so they wake him up. Say, hey, don't you feel the water in the boat? Can't you feel the waves rocking the boat? Can't you feel the winds pushing the boat? Jesus, don't you care that we are about to? Die. But watch what Jesus does. Watch 
Watch what Jesus does. The Bible says Jesus stands up, stretches out, mm, looks at the winds and the waves, and in Greek says two words, sapoyo famoyo. Your Bible translates it as peace, be still. Now, in, in looking this up, what I found out was peace, be still. That, that's just a nice way to put it. But here, what he really means and what he's saying in the Greek and, and what that means is to shut the mouth with a muzzle. That peace, be still is a nice way. But basically, what Jesus did, he stood up, stretched, looks at the winds and the waves, and looked at them and basically told them, hey, y'all, shut up. Bible just put it in a nice way, peace. Be still. But when he stood up, he spoke like a kid. Hey, y'all, shut up. And, then, and if I had to use my imagination in learning even more about what the real meaning of how he got up and what he said, if I had to use my imagination, I can imagine the winds and the waves hearing this and saying, oh, my bad, Jay. We didn't know that was you on the boat. Had we known, we would have never showed up. We didn't know. It's all right, but y'all got to keep that down. Y'all oh, y'all got to keep that down. But after, watch this, after Jesus rebukes the winds and the waves, he then turns to the disciples and rebukes them. How can you be scared? You mean to tell me that a little storm and all it is all it takes? For you to push the panic button in your life. He's telling them, you mean to tell me that a little storm and all is all that it takes for a little contrary wind for you to get scared? All it takes is just the rocking of your boat to get scared. All it takes is some mouths running against you for you to get scared. All it takes is some haters in their heart for you to get scared. All it takes is a little bit of envy around you for you to get scared. Listen, do you not realize who I am? What you getting scared for? Jesus indicts the disciples by saying, listen, you should not have been afraid. Watch this. He said, you should not have been afraid because you have everything that it takes to make it to the other side. And this is how, what I picked up from this, this is how you make it through the storm. This is how you sail to the other side. This is how you endure the storms that you have to go through. Watch what Jesus teaches them. The first thing that jumped out to me was he tells them we are going to cross over to the other side. But before that, Jesus says we have to leave the multitude. The first thing he says, we have to leave the multitude. I get it. I understand. I had to read that a few times myself to get it. He says we are crossing over but we can't take the multitude. He said we are heading somewhere but everybody with us now cannot go where we're going because the journey is not for everybody. Everybody is not qualified to cross over with you. I don't know who needs to hear this, but the problem in your storm is that you still have the wrong people with you. You still trying to sail with the crowd and the multitude, and Jesus is teaching us that if you're going to sail over, you've got to make a decision. And there are some people that have to stay on the shore while you sail the sea. Let, let, let me share this with you. There are some folk in your life that have... With, 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 this is Sunday, the 20, 20 There are some, some folk in your life that have about five days or maybe about 13 more hours in this gear level to be connected to you. Because the Lord, before the Lord tells them, it's time for you to stay where you are because I've got to cross over to the other side. You can't take everybody with you. But notice, what, notice who Jesus leaves. The multitude. I just told you who them jokers were. They weren't the Bible carrying people. They weren't the singing Amazing Grace folk. They were the folk that wanted something for him. They were not committed. They were not in love with the Lord. This was not the crowd that only, this was a crowd again, only to show up when they wanted something. 
And the Lord says, that's who you've got to leave behind. You've got to leave, oh, listen, you've got to leave behind the people that use you, took advantage of you. You've got to leave behind the people that stabbed you in your back. You've got to leave behind the people that tried to take you out. You've got to learn who to leave behind. Now, 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 let me tell you. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you why, why you or your neighbor haven't shouted yet. Because most of the time, most of the time, we can't discern who the multitude is. You are surrounding or surrounded with people that look like your friends. And you have not yet learned that they smile in your face. All the while trying to take your place. Some of y'all, yeah. Some of y'all, uh huh. Y'all ain't even saved all your lives. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got some backstabbers, some envious folk. You got too many haters and too many little folk and petty folk around you. And the Lord says, you, you, those are not the people who can cross over with you. So, so here's what God did. And I want to put this in perspective. Here's what he did. So in the past year of your life, the Lord has orchestrated some circumstances and situations that serve one purpose. To open your eyes to the real character and nature of the people that, that you've been dealing with. Because, because some of those people, some of those people had you uh, to take some words from Malcolm X, they had you hoodwinked, bamboozled. They had you run them up. They, they led you astray. But the Lord has revealed their real nature. And, and now you, I get it, you thought there was one thing and throughout your year, y'all got some folk that you got upset when you found out who they really were and they broke your heart. You was upset when you found out what they did. You was upset when you found out how it went down. But don't be mad. Get, just have a little praise for it because what happened was thank God that he opened your eyes so that you can see who you was dealing with. So watch this. How to make it over. How to make it over. Here's the bad news. Here's the bad news. You can't take everybody with you. But here's the good news. You have to take somebody. Read your Bible. Listen there if you had not torn it out. It's right. The Bible says that Jesus got in the boat, told them you can't take the multitude. But the Bible says some little boats went with him. The multitude stayed on the shore. But a few little boats crossed over with them. Because they found out that you need somebody to cross over with you. I don't care how big you are, how smart you are, how much money you make, how many degrees you have. There is the fundamental truth of everybody needs somebody sometime. That, that, listen, the long ranger needed Tonto. Batman needed Robin. Yogi needed Boo Boo. Harold Melvin needed the Blue Notes. Beyonce needed them other girls. Everybody needs somebody sometimes. But the Bible says that it wasn't a lot of boats. It was a few boats. Because the Lord wants you to learn something here. He, he, he wants you to know that you don't need a whole lot of folk. You just need a few folk. You need a few folk that will pray for you. You need a few folk that care about you. You need a few folk that will walk with you. You need a few folk that will sit down in your house and cry with you. All you need is a few good folk. And listen, if you have a few good folk that love you, if you have a few good folk that care about you, that call you, that check up on you, you are blessed beyond measure. Watch this, and you have everything that you need with a few folk. That's all you need. But the challenge is, there it is, the challenge is discerning who the few folk should be. That's why the Bible teaches us 
who our few folks should be. And, and can I tell you, can I tell you how to determine who ought to go with you? Let, let me tell you how to determine who ought to go with you. The Bible says that the ones that crossed over with Jesus were the ones who were in boats. Which means that these folks had boats to sail with the Lord. Now I told you a few minutes ago that Jesus said, get me a boat, put it in the water, and keep the motor running. So there are some folk, watch this, there are some folk in the multitude that saw Jesus get a boat. Jesus just got a boat. Hey, 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 go get that boat. Jesus. Jesus getting in his boat. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, let's get in that boat. Jesus started sailing to the other side. Jesus went that way. Come on, y'all. We're going that way. Look at what happens. Because these few folk that said, whatever the Lord is doing, that's what I'm doing. Wherever the Lord is going is where I'm going. The problem is you're surrounding yourself who, with people who are not striving to be like the Lord. When you look for a few, don't just look for tall, dark, and handsome. Don't just look for lips, hips, and fingertips. You have to find somebody that the Lord is in their heart. I need some folk that want to be like Jesus. I need some folk who, 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 who want to do what Jesus did. I need some folk who want to act like Jesus said. I need some folk that love God and loves him the way his father. Listen, I need some folk that's going to walk with him. And if you only get those few, then you're all right. But watch what happens. This is how you know those few are called by God. Jesus gets in his boat and he starts to sail. They encounter, oh my God. They encounter these other little small boats that watch Jesus, that mimic his moves and did what he did, follow where he went. Those are the folk that you want with you. But watch this. Here, here's a, even a, a further fact of saying these are the folk that I want with them. Because once they encounter the storm, it says in a few boats that sail with them, this is how you know that they're some good folk. The same storm. The same storm that was up, and, and, and I have to imagine the ship that Jesus was in was probably a pretty good size because it was a lot of them. But the, here's the water and everything pouring in, but a few little ships went with them enduring the same storm. But watch what happens. Nowhere in the Bible did you read or do you hear that the few boats turned around. We in the storm. Who is getting bad? Y'all see how big that boat is? Y'all see how it's rocking and shaking? Can my little boat stand up to this storm that's happening? They did not sail back. Some of us got some friends in our lives, Lord, have mercy, that when the storm comes and they're watching your boat and they see it how you shake and they see it how you rock it, they see it how the wind is pushing. Some people got some folk that'll see that and will turn their backs and they'll run away from you simply because they don't they don't have what it takes to endure the storm. But when you got a few folk that say, listen, you going in the storm, I'm going in with you. Let me go. These are the people that you want to have with you. You want some feet, some, some folk that's gonna that's gonna have your back. Listen, any fool can hang and run with you as long as the sun is shining. Any fool can follow you and be right there and say, oh, I got your back as long as you climb in the ladder. But let that ladder get knocked from beneath you. And you turn to you, where was the folk that said they was going to catch me? There are nowhere to be found. Watch this. You want to have some folk that's willing to stick with you. You want to have some folk that's willing to to, let me put it to you this way, let me put it to you this way. Uh, uh, Y'all remember, uh, turn with me to the book of uh, New Edition. New Edition. It says on a perfect day, 
I know that I can count on you. When that's not possible, tell me can you weather the storm because I need somebody who will stand with me. Through the good times and the bad times, they'll always be right here for me. Y'all remember New Edition song when they said that? What was the question at the end? Ah, there we go. Somebody know. The question at the end was, can you stand the rain? Some of us ought to be asking that question to some folk we got around us. Listen, can you stand the rain when the wind start blowing? Can you stand the rain? Can I count on you? Are you willing to follow me? Because, baby, I'm following the Lord. Wherever the Lord goes is where I'm going. Now, if you can't handle where I'm going with the Lord, then bye. I'm sorry. Don't let the door not hit you on your way out. But we have to figure that out if we want to make it to the other side. But then watch this, watch this, watch this. These disciples realizing that they had a problem, they did what any other good disciple would do. They talked to Jesus. Talked to Jesus. Took them a minute. They finally realized, wait, we got somebody on this boat that can help us. They talked to Jesus. And watch this. When they talked to Jesus, Jesus talked to the storm. When they talked to Jesus, Jesus then turns around and talked to the storm. They found out what we all should know by now. That when you have a little talk with Jesus, and you tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your faintest cry. And the Lord will answer by and by. Is there anybody or somebody in here that this last year that you had to have a little talk with Jesus? Is there anybody in here that when you had a little talk with the Lord, the Lord turned around and said, all right, then I'll talk to your storm. Is there anybody that's in here that the Lord has talked to your storm? Is there anybody in here that the Lord talked to your supervisor? Is there anybody in here that the Lord talked to your spouse, your friend, talked to your finances? Is there anybody that had a little talk with Jesus? And listen, when you have a little talk with Jesus, Jesus will turn around and talk to your stuff. He'll tell your, your, your problems to move. He'll tell you what needs to happen. Listen, prayer changes things. But watch this. Let me show you how powerful prayer is. And I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Jesus is in a boat. There were a whole lot of other little boats in the same storm. But Jesus is only in one boat. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Jesus is in a boat. There are a whole lot of other boats. How many boats is Jesus in? That's the theological question. But the natural question is, He's in one. He's in one. Which means the only boat, there was only one boat that talked to Jesus. And that was the boat that Jesus was in. It's the only one boat that had the talk with the Lord. But, but while they're in the storm, all the other boats are affected. But because one boat spoke with Jesus, because one boat had a conversation with Jesus, Jesus then spoke to the storm. And when he spoke to the storm, Lord have mercy, watch this, every boat was then blessed. You've got to see this, the power of prayer. That is when God blesses her, your life is going to get better. When God blesses him, your life is going to get better. When God blesses them, your life is getting better. Listen, how is this possible that my life is getting better? Because the simple fact that if you saw the Lord bless them, that's an increase in your faith to know that whatever God has done for somebody else, surely he loves me just the same and he'll do it for you. So therefore your life ends up getting better. But watch what happens. The Lord steps out, calms the storm and the sea, and not only were those on the big boat 
All right. But all the other little boats reap the benefits as well. Look at the overflow. Look at what's happening. And, and then watch this. Watch this. I, I was trying to figure this out. And I finally figured out why God gives us more than what we ask for. I finally figured this out. Because when God answers somebody else's prayers, their overflow of their answers causes the abundance of your requests, of our requests. When God answers their prayers, then all of a sudden I realize that now my life is blessed. So watch, watch this pattern. So you go to work and you got this co-worker that you can't stand. You, you, Lord have mercy, you cannot stand them. Why? They, that, that co-worker is disgruntled because they've been there for years, ain't never got no raise, ever, they, they never got no promotion, they disgruntled, now you have to deal with them. They mad because now the boss who's been overlooking them has not blessed them or gave them a raise or promotion or whatever because this boss goes home who has to deal with his wife who's given him the blues and they've been at odds for this, that, and the other for years to come and it just trickles down and then finally the root source of it is the wife has been having trouble with their mama the whole time so there's a mother-daughter relationship that has been torn apart that has trickled all the way down but somebody somewhere the wife finally said that hey I want to pray for my relationship to get better watch this she prayed for the relationship to get better all of a sudden now the daughter and mother has a better relationship. Oh, now the daughter is happy. Now the now the daughter, which is a wife, now has a better relationship with the husband. The husband ain't doing all this drinking. The husband is all right. The marriage is rekindled. Everything is happening good. Now this husband, who's the supervisor, goes back to work. He's in a good mood. He's having a good time. He finally sees that that co-worker that's been on your nerve has been doing a great job, gives them a raise, and, and all of a sudden in a promotion and move them up. And somewhere, because that person got moved up, the Lord looked at you and that manager looked at you and said, hey, I'm going to promote you. Now, now all of a sudden you've received a blessing that you weren't even looking for. You receive a peace of mind that you didn't even realize. Like, I don't know how this happened. Well, it happened because of the overflow that trickled all the way down to you. Now, let me share this with you. Sometimes you, there's a song, there's a song that happens that we sing all the time that says, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind. Took the time, but watch this. What I realized is somewhere in there, that, that that's a great song, but somewhere in there we have to change the lyrics. If you just take out for me and say somebody pray. Lord have mercy. Y all, y all, you don't even pray, but if you just pray, I'll be able to receive some of those benefits. But look, 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 look. They wake up, Jesus. They wake him up. Watch what they say. Lord, teacher, don't you care that we're about to perish? Don't you care that we're about to die? Don't you? Look, we, 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 us is going to die. Yeah. Us going to die. And again, I had to use my spiritual imagination here. And I had to look at this thing and really get an understanding. I can see Jesus looking at them saying, listen, I already told y'all. I told y'all where we was going. I gave y'all the destination. As a matter of fact, do you not know who I really am? I, I picture Jesus saying, listen, you think I came down through 40, uh, 40 and two generations to be born of a virgin Mary in a manger? To be God's only begotten son? Do you think that I'm, I came all this way only to die in the Sea of Galilee? No. He said, I, I got some things to do. I got to cross over to the other side because on the other side there's a woman with the issue of blood and on the other side there's a blind by the man who needs his eyes open. On the other side there's a lame man by the pool with Bethesda that needs to be healed. On the other side there's an old rugged cross. Yeah, yeah, 
that's got my name on it. And, and watch this. And what Jesus gives is an assurance. An assurance that we all should have. Jesus sees himself on the other side. He saw himself on the other side. And here's the problem with most of us. We can't see ourselves on the other side. Our vision is messed up. Well, our vision is all, 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 all confused because we don't see ourselves on the other side. All we see is the problem that's in front of us. All we see is the struggles that we have to go through. All we see is the right now moment. But somewhere in there, something ought to touch our hearts and our minds and say, listen, God already told me that I was going over to the other side. I mean, let, let me pause just for a second and ask you a question. When you look into 2022, and I know some of you have, what do you see? Ask yourself the question, what do I see in 2022? Well, since you don't have the answer, let me give you some. What I see is you walking in God's favor. What I see is you being the lender and not the borrower. What I see is your student loans being paid off. What I see is your new child that you've been waiting on. What I see is you you with a ring on your finger. Well, what I see, wait, wait, matter of fact, I, I, I see what I, I see you, but I don't recognize you. And I don't recognize you because you lost about 15 or 20 pounds. What I see is something that is of your favor that you walk in into with God on the other side. You've got to see yourself on the other side. All right, let me close this thing out. Let me close this thing out. Jesus wakes up. said, listen, know who to take with you. Leave the multitude behind. Points it out. There's a few folks that went with them that did not turn back. That's all you need is a few folk in your life. They learned the power of prayer because prayer and the overflow of prayer, if you're praying for yourself or somebody else, other things around you will be blessed through your prayer. But watch this. What I found out is when you talk to uh, Jesus, he'll talk to your storm. And I need you to also see that in order to make it to the other side, you have to have a vision and see yourself on the other side. But here, this gets me every time. He does not talk to the disciples first. It gets me every time. He, he doesn't talk to the disciples first. And I'm getting ready to get on out of here. He said, he, he talks to the storm. Now see, and, and if you think about that, it don't really make sense. Here, here, here I am, running to the Lord. Lord, listen, don't you care that we're about to die? Look at what's going on around here. The, 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 the common sense scenario is you would think the Lord would wake up and say, Vasco, don't you worry about all this that's going on. You think that you would get a little reassurance, but what he does is he stands up and he walks and he tells them, he tells the storm and then he goes back and I figured it out. Figured out why he didn't talk to the storm first. I mean, he didn't talk to the disciples first and he went to talk to the storm. Here it is. Because he had already told them what the plan was. He had already told them what happens and if the Lord speaks, we've got to take him at his word. As a matter of fact, this and I'm, and I'm, I'm sitting down, this, 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 this is what I envisioned. And how, how many of y'all, and I know a lot of you in here, have a good old school pen? A good old school parent where you've heard the saying of my house, my roof, my rules. Y'all heard that? Or, 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 or if you had, uh, or you, 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 you said at some point, oh, you, you trying to get me, I'm going to call the police. And your parents said, well, you got to make it to the phone first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or how about this one? How about this one? Everybody's had to endure this one. Listen, we're about to go into this store. Don't you touch nothing. Don't you ask for nothing. And you ain't getting 
Yeah, no, not, we've all had that parent that said, don't you touch nothing, don't you ask for nothing, because you ain't getting nothing. But somewhere in the midst of you walking in that store, you said everything possible, and you end up, what you end up doing? You end up either touching something, or you end up asking for something. And then all of a sudden, your mama would turn around, she would grab you by the arm and give you a good little grabbing and probably a good little shaking. You can't do that nowadays because we'll call them cops on you. But they probably gave them a good little shaking and said, didn't I tell you when we got in this store, don't you ask for nothing, don't you touch nothing, you ain't getting nothing. So that's what happened. She set the rules before you got in the store. So you already know. And that's what I saw right here. What I saw was the Lord telling them, we about to cross over to the other side. Lord have mercy. And, and, and that is when we should realize that he's already laid the ground rules. Now I have to be obedient and just get to the other side. But unfortunately, Lord have mercy, we're all wretches undone. We're all people that have fallen short. Unfortunately, we messed up. And unfortunately, when the storm comes, unfortunately, when your enemy shows up, I, I, when your enemy shows up and you get nervous and you get scared, I can imagine the Lord looking at us, looking down and grabbing us by the arm and saying, didn't I tell you that you don't have to worry about your enemies because I've already told you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Listen, we, we, we got to this pandemic. We started having shutdowns. We started getting nervous. We started worrying about it. And I got a picture of the Lord grabbing you by the arm and saying, didn't I tell you that I'll supply all of your needs? You don't have to worry about nothing, Lord, have mercy. Then we realize when we get to these things that we get angry about and we're getting frustrated and we're trying to figure out why is this happening to me? And the Lord comes in again, grabs you by the arm. Didn't I tell you that whatever happens, whatever comes your way, all things work. Remember what I told you. Remember what I said. Remember what I've already spoken into your life. And we have to understand that if I'm going to make it to the other side, if I'm going to make it to where God is trying to take me, if I'm going to make it and get to the promised land, if I'm going to make it and receive the things that I've been praying for, I've got to take him at his word. Then I got to look around. Who are these folk that's walking with me? Are you, can I count on you? Can I count on you to be there with me when, when things get rough? Are you a fair weather friend? We, we have to eliminate the multitude and get down to the thick of things. And, and, and once you even narrow it down, pay attention to the little ships that's following you. Are they turning back and running? The Lord says, I'm telling you this is how you make it to the other side. I'm telling you there's some things in store for you. I'm telling you that there's still work for you to do. So we have to Listen to his word. Listen to his promises. And at that moment, even walking into 2022, you can stand and say, listen, I made it through this year. I made it through another year. But when I walk into this new one, God has already given me the assurance that the rain is going to fall, but he's going to be standing by. Heartache's going to come, but he's a heart fixer. I'm going to have to cross some stormy waters. He said, but I'll be a bridge over your troubled water. I may be down in a valley low, but there I am a living in the valley. We can make it to the other side if you just trust him. 
if you just accept him and take him at his word, the door is open. There may be one who's saying, listen, I've been walking on this side for way too long. I've been struggling for way too long. But now I'm ready to cross over to the other side to where the Lord is standing there with an outstretched hand and open heart saying, come unto me all ye who are heavy laden and Lord have mercy. The door is open. We extend this privilege to you right now in the name of Jesus. He wants you in his heart. He wants you in his mind. He wants you in his life. He wants you to open and accept him. But watch this. Watch this. The Bible does some things that should cause us to run and shout and just give God glory. Even throughout the whole verses that we read, we read about the stone, we read about where we was going, we read about what's happening. But in your Bible right now, turn. Turn. If you don't have it, that's all right. That very next chapter, that first verse, says, and they made it to the other side. Look at the reassurance that lets us know if we just hold on. I, I used to get to the to the to the complex of thinking, oh, it's the end of the chapter. But sometimes you have to keep reading. Because it's a carryover, it's a continuation somewhere. And when I kept reading, and I first and they made it. other side. Listen, when you turn the page at midnight, tell yourself, and I made it to the other side. Tell yourself, I made it to the other side. All that we went through, all that we endured, all, it was simply a test. It was a test of knowledge, a test to strengthen you, a test to, as a matter of fact, let me give you, consider it at this being the end of the semester. And at the end of the semester, you look back over the course of the things that you learned all year long. And what's normally at the end of a semester? It's normally a final exam. And let me just be your proctor right now. Give you a final exam. Don't worry, you don't need no paper. It's an oral exam. Just a few questions that I want you to answer. It lets us know that you understand all that God did was for your good. Question number one. Watch this. Won't he make a way for you? Question number two, won't he answer your prayers? Look, 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 won't he move your mountains? Won't he open the doors? Won't he take care? If your answer is yes, then you learned the lesson. You learned, you, 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 you ought to be able to say, listen, I got a little stronger through this year. I've had some heartaches, I've had some pain, I've had some hills to climb, but through it all, <laughs> made it to the other side.
one. And I encourage you. I encourage you that wherever you do, wherever you're going, when you walk into 2022, if we had watched me, I would tell you all of this, but since we're not having it, I will tell you now, when you walk into your 2022, walk into it with God on your side. Don't take another step. Don't take another thought. Don't do nothing until you stop and at least say, Lord, thank you for this another year. Lord, thank you that all the trials and tribulations that happened last year, they didn't come to destroy me. They hurt for a little while. But in the end, it made me strong. Walk into it, telling them thank you. But now, don't just tell them thank you. Now say, Lord, everywhere I go, lead me. Hold my hand. Keep me tight in your bosom. For the devil will get busy. The devil will try to seek and destroy you. But if you just trust in him, if you just hold on to him, I, God has something in store for you next year. Amen. Amen.
love you. Uh, Sister Sean Montgomery, we're praying for you. Amen. Uh, we're lifting you up in our thoughts. Uh, uh, again, happy birthday, Sister Turner. Enjoy your day. Amen. Let us pray. Now, God, how we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. God, bless us to understand and know, God, that you are guiding us, you're leading us, and you're helping us to make it to the other side of whatever it is that we may have to endure, whatever it is that we may have to go through. You already told us that you will be there, you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. And now, God, as we leave this place, we pray for traveling grace. We pray that you keep us. We pray that you watch over us, that we can return back into this house to give your name more praise, more honor, more glory, as you are due all of it. In Jesus' name, amen.